Welcome to the Casey Catch Up. It's been a little while between episodes with the Christmas break and New Year's break, but I'm back into it and I'd like to kick things off with Josh Koo, um, who's actually a Coach Casey Club member and um, he certainly cut his teeth um, using the Coach Casey Club. And look, we go through his failures, we go through his successes, um, board choice, foil choice, uh, different runs, Bay versus Ocean. There's a whole, I guess, realm of things that we discuss. And I think it's going to be really beneficial for people who wanted to learn to downwind foil. Because look, Josh makes it look easy when he's filming, but it's not. And especially when you're learning, he certainly... He, look, he'd lots, of, he'd lots of hard times. And um, because it's, it was really cool to have a chat to Josh now that he's sort of learned it and, and sort of find out what worked for him, what didn't work for him. And um, basically, you know, a bit of life stuff too, like uh, just going to go for it, give it a crack and put the time in. And look, um, there's no shortcuts. There's ways you can streamline the process, um, but there's no shortcuts. And Josh certainly took his time to learn and stoked to say he's doing it now. Um, so he's, he's earned his call up to the Casey catch up. And look, um, it's a really good one. So for those... For those learning the downwind foil, those who want to know more about downwind foiling, this is a really good one. So listen to, jump in, listen to Josh Koo, uh, really talking about uh, how he learned to downwind foil and his background. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. For more content, go check out the Coach Casey Club because there's a bunch of stuff just like this, um, stepping you through the process and look at for 50 bucks a month. It's, it's money well spent. It'll teach you how to use your gear rather than having to buy a new gear that might work a percentage better. So anyway, let's get into it. The Casey Catch-Up with Josh Koo. All right, welcome back to the Casey Catch-Up. It's been a little while over the Chrissy break, but I'm stoked to have Josh Koo in. And we've, I've actually spent a fair bit of time with Josh the last four or five days. We've done a couple of downwinders, a toe session, and it's been cool to sort of I just just hang out really. But um, we've been meaning to do this this podcast for a little while now and um stoked that we got that time together as well downwinding and towing and um welcome mate yeah and no, i'm stoked first of all i wanted to say thanks for um befriending us and like this whole journey of my foiling and downwinding like um pretty much wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you because i, I pretty much a year from like around this month I just got back from the States and um, I'd contacted Perth. He's a buddy of mine who he had on last week. And um, I was like, I want to do this downwind thing. I, I'm like, I'm not that, like I do, I love prone foil, but like downwind is where I want to be. And then I remember I hit him up and I hit you up. I didn't even know you from a bar. So like obviously knew you from like the foiling world, but had never actually spoke to you before. And I was like, hey, Jimmy, how's this uh, six one by um i think it was like 26 wide by no it was more than 26 28 wide by 105 liters and you're like uh yeah it'd be sweet yeah get it <laughs> and i was just like <laughs> well a year right, ago so, that was probably a good one <laughs> yeah yeah totally but then like I, I dropped money on that thing and then like had the the uh got it in the water couldn't even stand on it and then um I remember just pestering you every second day. How do you do this? How do you do that? And you're like, just join the Casey club. And I'm just like, no, 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 I'll be sweet. I'll be sweet. And then literally yeah. I bit my tongue and like paid the the monthly fee. And I was just like, it's the best thing I've ever done. And then now like we're, we're mates now, we're hanging out, which oh, is fucking sick. So that's generally what so, happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, if someone's as enthusiastic as I am about downwinding, then it's like, and you live close by, it's like, we'll be doing runs together. Yeah. You know, the first run I did with Zane, he's like, I really want to crack this. I'm like, I've surfed with him before. I'm like, dude, we're going to be great mates. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know Zane before foiling? Not really, no. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah, so it's all just new friendships from the downwind foiling. and Well, That's foiling cool. in general, but downwind is a special tight-knit group. It's a um, special, yeah. And then I, I met your missus the other day and it feels like, yeah, we're all getting closer and closer. It's cool. You know the family, mate. You, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been really cool to see your progression and I guess I want to do a little bit of a background on you, Josh. Like you did more than just a foiler. You didn't just pick this thing up and um, with no ocean experience. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like what did you do when you were like in the 
30 years prior to like I've known you basically. So um, yeah, I started off like as a teenager surfing because that's just what all my friends did. And then I got a bit of a bug um, for surfing bigger waves. Um, I was really not into the whole competition scene. I had a few friends go that way. And I just really didn't like beating people. Like I like to just have my own little goals and my own little, um, yeah, things that I wanted to achieve myself. And for me, big wave surfing was that. It, it, it ticked a lot of goals and, you know, would chase swells up and down the coast, like got my P plates and like trying all these different waves and, you know, ticking off all these these heavier waves and bigger waves. And um, I've been doing that ever since, like pretty much out of 16, 17. And um, still to this day, like I, I love, I love chasing those, those thrills of like being out in the elements and, um, and yeah, just like using your skill set to tackle those big waves that come around. Mm, Yeah. The Um, conditions, I I feel like the big wave scene and the downwind foil scene is kind of similar in that it's it's tight. It's super similar. And like the, the feels that I get for paddling out, like say a big wave spot or something is the exact same feels I get just before I launch on a downwind run and I'm like, oh, is it windy enough? Is it, have I got the right gear? Have I got the right board? And it's like the same like anxious feeling if you're going to be able to achieve it. And, and I, I love that feeling because, yeah, you're using your skill set to, to master like the ocean, something that shouldn't be mastered. So it's really cool. Mm, yeah. yeah. It was cool going out the other day at um, Shelley Beach. We did Manly to Palmy. And um, I think just when you'd messaged me, I, I think I probably replied to you straight away because I saw the wave you got at Dead Man's. And um, you said you didn't want to talk about it, but Josh got a pretty nice wave at Dead Man. From wave, I think they called it Wave of the Winter a few years ago. And big backhand barrel. And anyway, we did a downwinder from the exact spot the other day from Manly to Palmy. And how was that experience? I guess like obviously that wave was one thing, but just the other day, how was paddling from Manly to Palmy, which is kind of an iconic run, I feel like, for the Northern Beaches. Like how was paddling out into those? It was pretty wild conditions. Yeah, that, um, that was actually the... Uh that was the only time that I'd been back since that wave. So it was, yeah, it was cool. Like um, we were paddling out and it was like a, a bit of surf around that day. We seen like a few guys on, on the point surfing that in a bit. I think it's Winky and um, the Bower. But um, no, nah, it's cool. Like it's a beautiful coastline there. It's just, like, that's the first bit of the Northern beaches that get hit by the southerly front. Hence why we're shooting from that direction because it's so protected. And then yeah, aiming down to, to Palmy, which was... That was a beautiful run. It was really nice. It was pretty similar conditions, I guess, to the day that it was really big, but it was just lacking that the swell size. But the wind was wind was pretty much doing the same thing, I guess. Yeah, I, I've um I've only served Dead Man's once, and I told a story to you when we we're paddling out from there the other day. But normally, I go to Manly when the wind and the swell is massive, and I look at everyone surfing. And there's like fifty guys sitting on one spot, and I'm like, "You guys can have it." I just paddle past them, wave to a few of my mates, and then just downwind to Palmy. And they're, yeah, like, what no. are you, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, mate, there's no one out here and you're getting the same swell even more, less less protected. No, that's, um, that's what I want to hit it on a day like that I got that wave and downwind because imagine yeah. catching that wave, but for an hour long, just bouncing from that wave to the next wave to the next wave. <laughs> like that's, yeah. uh, that's my goal. So yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do it. It's, it's, gonna, it's in the works. Um, yeah. let's, let's wind back and let's talk about... Um, yeah, for progression. So when you first messaged me, you got a six one by twenty eight. I said, "Yeah, it's fine, whatever." <laughs> Probably gave you a bunk for you. Um, no, it actually it 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 was the right board because at, at, like a year ago there was there was no none of these downwind boards that are popping out now. Like the only boards that we had were sup foils. They weren't sup downwind foils. They were just sup foils. Yeah. And um, I think at that time, I, I reckon probably you 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 were on something similar, right? A six one by I was on, probably 26 I was on a, wide or something. I've done a six by 24 for about two and a half, three years. So yeah. yeah. And I could paddle uh, it up, but and, yeah. yeah, it was harder than what the new boards are now. For sure. Totally. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it's because my skill has gotten a little bit better, but I honestly think that board was so rocky, even though it was like probably 27 or 28 wide. Mm. Um, I think maybe the lack of length as well. There's just like four axes that it's rocking on instead of like, you know, the length kind of making it a bit more stable. But um, yeah, I got that board, got it off Brad De La Cruz, the legend from LA. And um, he hooked me up and gave me like, 
his old paddle as well. And he actually took me out in LA and uh, gave us like a rundown through the surf. Like this is how you paddle, all this stuff. And I couldn't even, I couldn't stand on the board. Every time I stood up, I fall down. And like, <laughs> I still brought it back to Sydney because I'm like, I'm going to do this. Like everyone told me like, you'll get it, but like, it's, you, it's not going to be easy. So yeah. um, that was my little, uh, my little goal. I brought it back to Sydney and like, um, I think I even, I took it over to Longy one day and I seen Zane and a few of the boys winging. You might've been there. And I remember Zane, I didn't even really know him that well, but, back then, but he was like, mate, you just got to do it. He goes, everyone sucked. So I was paddling around and I remember I couldn't even paddle into the little waves at White Rock there at Long Reef. And I think that day I, I got up on one and got it going for a little bit. And that was enough to just give me the taste. And I was like, I was hungry, really hungry. But um, at the time I was riding Axis and um, I think I only had a 980, the HPS. That's the only wing that I owned. But um, what I did was, I think I call, call, uh, cold call WSS and seen if I could get a lend of a bigger wing. And Sam, the legend there, that's where the whole relationship started with WSS. He demoed me a 1060. And um, I think I was just using my 460 tail that I had. It was just, I didn't want to buy another one, but it was good tail for, I think, just like nice and flat. Um, mm. Uh, so I was, using the, I was using the 1060 and that's the one that I first got up on foil paddling up on with the sup in bumps. Uh, no, sorry, not in bumps, in little waves. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't paddle it up in bumps, but um, I was trying to do it in little waves. And I went over to a spot over in Cronulla um, called Bay Surf, which is like a gutless Excellent. wave. Yeah, yeah, gutless wave, barely breaks. Sometimes it breaks. And I went there and I remember that's... Yeah, I cracked it then. I was with another um, one of the Bondi boys, Benny. He seen me do it and I couldn't believe it. Like I paddled up. It wasn't a breaking wave, but it was very close to breaking. But it was enough for me to be like, holy shit, maybe I can I can do this. So it was just like little little tastes of success in between a lot of failures, yeah. which, um, which is, I think, what you need. I think instant success is there's no gratification. That's there's doesn't no satisfy the first. No, no. Yeah. I was telling you the other day, like I tried winging for the second time uh, the other day and I got it just, I got it that session. I was like tacking and jiving, come back, even dropping the wing and I um, came in and I'm like, yeah, I'll do winging if it's like nothing else to do, but I'm not hungry for it because like Too easy. Maybe, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't earn it. Like, mm. but, um, but yeah, so it went from the 1060. That was the wing that helped me. And then, um, and then I just went on the, that's where I turned into the full foil pest where I was just stealing, well, not stealing, but I was um, just scabbing foils at left, right and center. I think I probably scabbed oh. a foil off you, got one off Jeremy. I think I went from the 1099 to the, uh, that, I, and I realized that was just way too uh, high aspect for me and way too advanced. And then I went back to the 1050 and then I landed on the 1050 because it was just very, uh, I only owned the black fuse in the Axis and I didn't want to buy like another red fuse. Um, but yeah, I swapped and changed, but pretty much landed on the 1050. And that for my weight, uh, 76 kilos was just a good all rounder where um, could still turn it because I found with those really big wings, uh, once I paddled up, say for example, the um, 1150, I could paddle that up, but then I couldn't surf it. And I didn't, yeah. didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a really good lesson. I think like what you did well was you didn't just go straight into a downwinder and just like scar yourself so badly that you'd never do it again. You know? No, no. And you no. Sort of went out. Yeah. Little waves. Little waves is like yep. I think kind of the perfect, perfect way to start because it's you got more chance of getting going because you're catching a wave. And then obviously, yeah. um, I think flat water for the first session is a good thing to do just to just to find your balance on the board. And maybe that's something you missed, but it's... no, I, I did it. Yeah, I did. I did the flat water. I think I did five sessions where I just went to the boat ramp yeah. and paddled yeah. to try and get that uh, paddling straight thing because that yeah. blew my mind at the start. I was like, why am I paddling in circles? <laughs> so <laughs> I got the, I got the J stroke. Um, I think I hit up head dip and he was like, you got to do this J stroke thing. And then I think after that, I joined the coach Casey club and got all the, the facts and yeah. 
But um, I love that dip. All his all his knowledge is like not his own. He's just like he doesn't the internet, and he just he doesn't knows he doesn't everything. even yeah he doesn't even sub downwind, but he knows everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. He's the encyclopedia. He's the encyclopedia. If anyone ever yeah. needs a question, don't ask me. Ask Head Dip. <laughs> yeah, he'll remember. He'll, he'll remember. remember. Sure. He'll tell you. Um, but um, yeah, no, I uh, so yeah, um, back to the progression, I was pretty much making very very small steps um in progression and i couldn't figure out why the hell like i was sucking so bad at this and i think zane and perth said you need to just sup Mm. until you get this so i put my prone board away i put towing on the back end uh because towing back then i loved i was just doing that like every second day i fully just pissed all that off and just went to the sup guy i was like full supping in the surf and just trying to learn balance trying to yeah it was just it, it just worked out so pretty much for three months straight i didn't touch a prone board and i was just supping yeah and that is what taught me swing weight taught me how to control a big wing because i've never even ridden wings that big before yeah um yeah i just and like I, once I get my head stuck in something, I'm I'm just like all of like all or nothing. So I was just so tunnel vision, and like I don't know, I I got my own little business. So whenever there was the slightest puff of wind, I would be going somewhere to do something. Like I drop everything. Yeah. And I think that's you. You need to dedicate time. Like that's the that's the hard thing with downwind. Is like there's there's no shortcut. Serious, there's yeah. No shortcut. There's no shortcuts. Like yeah. there's there's advice that can help steer you in the right direction but the yeah. short like you still got to put the time in and that's that's one of the things with the coach casey club like people say oh you know i've tried this i bought this new board bought this new foil you still got to put time on it like yeah. and, and there's definitely you can do the wrong thing for a while but you'll and you'll find the right direction but you'll waste a lot of time but with a bit yeah. of advice then uh, good advice i think you can definitely streamline the process but there's no shortcuts time, i'm definitely a um I'm a terrible like learner from like reading and watching YouTube or whatever. I learn the best from literally failing. Like mm-hmm. I'll go out there and like just be in pain and agony for ages. But then I'd always after the session come in and be like, what did I learn? Okay. I learned that South East wind sucks for the East coast. I mean, for the Eastern <laughs> suburbs. suburbs. Don't, yeah. don't go out in those conditions. <laughs> yeah. um, I learned that like, uh, the bumps at the very start of the run at South Maroubra are always nicely stacked together. But then when you get further down the run, it gets more refracted. So make sure you're up on foil before then or paddle back up <laughs> to the start. So I learned like a lot of things, but very slowly. And um, yeah. And you yeah. always learn more from failures than success. Like- and I kind of like, yeah, turn into like a little bit of like a, I don't know if it's, I don't know, it sounds insane, but like you'd kind of like, not be pumped on the fails, but like, you'd be like, Oh, at least I've, you know, given it a crack and you're not going to learn by watching someone else fail. You need, well, for me, I reckon I need to do, I need to go through that process to learn. Mm. So, yeah. That was, yeah. um, no, I, I, well, on the coach Gacy stuff, there was, you posted plenty of fails and you obviously learn a lot. And, um, I was stoked to get a couple of runs in with you now that you've progressed to a point. Like you said the other day, I've made the A team. <laughs> 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 i don't know about made the a team but i've got the call up to even join the crew so it's good yeah, yeah right, you're really the call good. up yeah i think yeah. you called us up but it still counts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um i'm like another another thing that uh i think really helped with the progression and i guess i'm fortunate enough is to do it multiple spots different types of conditions don't just wait for that one condition and go out because you learn the most from when you in the bay or in the ocean like or go on northern beaches or go on eastern suburbs or i'll well, you know yeah let's oh, yeah. let's talk about the bay runs so i think this is something that like when i started learning to downwind foil that was never a thing like a bay run was something that was only when conditions were super wild and the ocean was like hard to get out or come in um but botany bay and pit water more so botany bay has become a real like training ground mm. for downwind foiling and you know it's right in your backyard I actually have still never done a botany run because it's an hour it's drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just far. too far. I've done plenty of pit water runs, which is the equivalent here on the northern beaches. And um, 
epic when the wind's strong it's, it's an epic way to learn safely too so totally how, how did that sort of factor into like your learning so i'm very fortunate i live only about 10 minutes away from botany bay um was lucky enough that you know last year when i started we had la nina so we had serious weather pretty much the whole year so yeah a lot of a lot of wind and um Botany Bay is very lucky where pretty much an easterly, a westerly, a southerly, it's just a northerly that it doesn't like. So you got like all these options and last the start of last year, we had wind all, all the time. So we were sending it. We had like a WhatsApp group. It's called the Team B group. And um, I linked up with Anthony Davis, the biggest legend ever. He never worked. So he was on my route team. I mean, he was on my schedule. I'd always be like, he was my go-to. Um, and then from there, we had a lot of other people who joined the group, which are awesome. And um, yeah, just being vocal, like start a, start a WhatsApp group, get people G'd up, try find people who are at the same level as you. Um, you've created something great with your Facebook page um, with like that community. So the hardest thing with Downwind is just trying to find that lift. And um, <laughs> yeah, like if you can find that little crew who are on the same schedule as you, you're off. So even even if you're going and the conditions aren't ideal, I always look at it as like, even if we're paddling for an hour and a half, it's still an exercise. It's still learning paddle skills. It's learning balance on the board. Um, learning conditions, reading the exactly. ocean. Yeah. You just got to send it in every condition. But um, that's, that's, that's mine. That's really good advice. Um, a lot of people will wait for the perfect like the perfect day and yeah. the perfect day doesn't exist. No, <laughs> it just doesn't. Never. If, never. if you wait for the perfect day, you will never be ready for the conditions on that perfect yeah. day. So totally. yeah, going all the time and having people with similar, similar skill sets. And I guess, well, well now you, now you learn to wing that you probably time to deflate downwind. Right. You can try that for sure. But I, um, yeah, the other day when we were out there, the wind kind of, dropped out and we all fell down at once and then luckily another puff came and i was like fuck that i'm going in i'm not getting stuck out here with the, with the wing connected to me oh the wing is <laughs> I, I can paddle like and you're probably the same now you're probably getting up earlier paddling on your downwind board than you are winging like oh yeah the, totally because like yeah. the wing takes a certain level of wind to get going whereas you can get up with no wind on the paddle because yeah there's a downhill. The are still there yeah yeah exactly. yeah yeah. yeah. So it's um, um, interesting how the wing and the, the downwind paddling is different. But um, yeah, well, back so, to, yeah, the bay runs. Yeah, back to the bay. Um, bay runs, you need specific gear, which is very suitable for learning. You need really big wings that are super slow because the bumps in the bay, uh, um, it's just wind chop. There's no ocean energy. So you're riding like, you know, it's probably if you calculate it, like five, six second wind chop so it's moving super slow uh you need to match that with the correct foil uh, a lot of the guys here in the east they go to the 1150 axis or the big 1300 i think sean's on the big 1300 uh these are perfect um bumps are always very stacked together and there's just heaps of them mm. so very different to the ocean um you, you know if, if you miss one there'll be one directly behind it it's like so consistent so that's mm. why it's so good for learning. The um, groomers, the bay the groomers. groomers. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, there's literally a bump like a meter behind you that's going to catch you if you make a mistake into a trough. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, bays are awesome. But I think now that I've kind of, the goal was always to get into the ocean is to, I see a lot of guys who still just like, maybe it's their confidence, but don't be scared to then move into the ocean because I think you'll realize once you move into the ocean, you need much less wind because you're riding, you're tapping into swells now. And then that's, that's, that's when it's fun because you, you can downsize your foils, mm -hmm. you can go faster um, and you don't need those crazy windy conditions anymore. You can go out in, in 10 to 12 knot winds. Yeah. And, and have fun. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're surfing yeah. waves now. You're not surfing like tiny little chops and having to peel off every two seconds. Like, um, so I would definitely, um, once you've got your confidence up in the bay, get straight in the ocean. You'll probably never go back to the bay again because unless, unless 
you have to because the swell's too big. But once you go to the ocean, there's no looking back. It's so good. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. Wind direction, like westerly, is still good for bays because the ocean kind of sends you to the wrong wrong country. Totally. But totally. Um, there's still days that, like, I'm looking at bay runs. But um, let's talk about the progressing down foil size. So definitely the bay to ocean is, a, is, is the way to do it if you have the option. Not everyone has a lake or a bay or a harbour. True. But if you have it or the more protected part of your downwind run, that's going to be the best place to learn. Um, but then, so you spoke about um, the 1050 mm-hmm. and um, what was your, like, how'd you size down? I think, yeah, tell us that. So I, I was borrowing the 1150 off Jeremy and that's perfect for the bay. Mm-hmm. And then because I was borrowing it and I, I only had a black fuse, so I was like, had to buy a wing and I'm like, I'm not going to buy a red fuse and the 1150 i'm just going to buy this 1050 because i've already got the black fuse set up um did that and um that's i reckon the 1050 is just slow enough for the bay mm-hmm. um i yeah. wouldn't go any smaller than that because yeah. to be honest if it was a bad got, day on the bay you'd be in trouble you'd be struggling yeah and it's not yeah. fun like it's I've, I've tried to downsize more than that in the bay and it's awful you're just pumping the whole way it's yeah. honestly the worst thing in the world. You're better off going slower and just enjoying that bump slowly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So after the 1050, I then was lucky enough to get um, signed up with Unifoil. And Unifoil, um, their biggest wing in their range at the moment is the 210 Hyper 2, which is actually, I think it's a little bit bigger than the hps 980 from axis so i didn't have an option to go to the bay anymore which was kind of good it was like a mm. kick in the right direction because i was yeah, like i remember okay. you saying you're like oh i've got this chance to go with you I'm like mate take it but the bay runs are gonna take a hit yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but um it's uh it was time to move on anyway i had done i was doing bay runs like every second day which was awesome and i love them. i'll still go back to do a bay run I went back the other day to do one, but like, um, it was like a, yeah, kind of push in the right direction. I, um, once I got that, uh, ocean runs opened up for me. Um, my wingman Perth, who's on the exact same schedule as me, he's a tradie, finishes work at three, wind kicks in usually around then. And, um, we would, we would usually do in summer now the Bondi to Maruba run which I find is a lot easier than the other way around in a southerly because I find usually the nor'east swell and the wind are smaller periods. So easier to paddle up because the bumps are a little bit more tightly stacked together. And uh, I find in a nor'east wind, the, the, the bumps are steeper. Whereas like in a southerly, when it's going the other way, they're more slopey, but bigger waves harder yeah. to paddle up i find yeah. personally yeah unless it unless it, unless it's nuking like what we had the other day with manly the palmy yeah but like if it's in that 10 to 12 knot nor'easter i can paddle up easy 10 to 12 knot southerly i'm struggling yeah it's so, like the, the northeast is like a shorter period peaky stuff whereas the mm. southerly is like this big exactly it's long. like a mound yeah. yeah yeah and if you don't have that like big long barracuda subboard or less or or if you're a freak paddler like you're just like never finding that downhill. You're just always mm-hmm. like coasting kind of like that. Yeah, um, exactly. So nah, that's... yeah, so I pretty much nor'easters, if you've got them, that would be my progression from the bay because mm-hmm. they're just like, I, and they're, they're nicer too. It's always sunny when it's nor'east. Yeah. So <laughs> you're in like board shorts or whatever. It's, it's fun. And then when you start getting, once you start ticking all them off, um, those runs, Definitely the southerly is getting more to the expert level because usually the swell always accompanies southerly. Like it's usually a big swell. Mm. So you're moving faster. Um, you can downsize foils quite easily when it get, starts getting bigger like that because usually when you get a southerly, um, a big southerly front, it's usually 20 knots at least. So, um, yeah. So I now with the unifoil range, I... I've got all the hypers. So usually the 210 is, I, I usually go the 210 from 10 knots to 12. And then um, the 190 when it's um, 12 to say 
15 and then 15 above I'll run the 170 Hyper 2. Um, I've also been playing around with the new Eric progression wing from Unifoil. Um, he's got a 170 of that. And he's also got a 140 that I used that day when we did the yeah. um, Manly to Palmy, which was really cool. That's pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. It was cool to, um, so I didn't really see much of the progression rings, but it was the 140, like, um, that was, that's like, it's sick that you could use the smallest foil that you've got, like, minus the Vipers, I guess, like towing, mm. I, you know, downwind foils that you'd even consider downwinding anyway. And it worked yeah. well for days like like that. It was, cool. it was great. And I've, I think I've used the 140 now for four downwind sessions and I've had zero troubles paddling up, which is really cool because that's the smallest foil I've ever used. And I, I'm, I'm bad at, um, like, testing a foil before the wind's up. I'll just you know yeah. all all in and go I, we don't really have like a brown water where you can paddle out 100 meters and paddle back in like yeah i don't know i'm just like yeah it, it, in the southerly you guys could do like um at la perouse like kuwong that and it's pretty ugly water but true true yes yeah. you could for sure yeah but, but, but then but then you're not really getting the ocean energy accompanying it it's more just like yeah for sure wind, it's, it's not the end of a run yeah, yeah it's quite protected yeah 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 but um but um Another thing um, I also played around with the, with my progression that I didn't mention was I definitely, I borrowed a, um, a really short mast off a friend, Lisa. She was very kindly uh, lent it to me. It was a 60, 60 centimetre mast. And that, that was a big stepping stone to me getting on foil when I was paddling back with that axis gear. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't, yeah. It's hard to say. I wouldn't recommend buying one because you'd probably get it. And then after a month, you'd want to step up. Um, but if you can get your hands on a smaller mask, for sure, that's that's the biggest tip with paddling up, I find, um, al along with the, your, your foil choice. But that was the difference between sometimes me getting up and not getting up. And yeah. especially, in, especially in a bay when the chops are like only knee yeah. high, and you're never going to breach. You're never yeah. going to breach on a 60 centimeter mask. So um, that was that was huge with uh, with the help. Uh, now I've been running the seventy five centimeter katana mask with my unifoil stuff, and I find with downwind that's that's been awesome. But then the other day when it was nuking and big swell, I stepped it up to the eighty three katana mask because just wanted a little bit more play in those bigger waves. It's just mm. the bumps are bigger, the swells bigger. Like you're going faster and. You know, if you quickly need to lift up over a, a, a wind chop, but then the the swell drops out from under, you, like it's it's easy to bridge. Yeah. But um, yeah, playing around with those mast sizes, but um, yeah, definitely now my go to is seventy five unless it's really big surf. Yeah. No, that's exactly the same. Um, interestingly, it's same for me, except I I've now don't use my eighty two downwind even on those big days. I've kind of um tuned in my 75 and at first i was breaching heaps <laughs> it was on those big days it was a just you know i was it was a shit show um but when you you i feel like you just got to put time into the your, your mass length and when you can tune into that you know you you know it pretty well whereas if you're chopping and changing like if you go to a 90 down to a 75 like you tow on a 90 in the morning yeah 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 and you're downwind on the 75 the next you know yeah, it's it's just like your brain explodes and you're just breaching everywhere. Totally, um, and I think that comes with time. Like I think Zane said it really well yesterday. Is like it's not so much mass height; it's that feeling when your wing is close to the surface. Like it doesn't matter what height your mast is, if it's a sixty centimeter or a ninety-five centimeter. There's still that same feeling when your foil is really close to the water because you're you're flying. There's no drag. Yeah. So I guess yeah. it's just getting used to that feeling and knowing without seeing, like looking over your rail where your mast is, that feeling. And like, yeah. if you can do that, that's when you're going to be the most efficient. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I guess it's just like anything, it's just time on foil and getting to know that, like the back of your hand. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, You didn't, I guess you said you, you, know, you didn't do any like sort of practice runs. You just sort of sent it using a small, like when you were downsizing, you just sort of just went. And if it was too small, it was too small and you struggled a bit. And if it was, too big you got up and you were happy um oh yeah like i've how many a, how many failures <laughs> it's been a well it's like been a year and it's so funny because I've, I've got so many people now being like oh my god like 
you've progressed so quickly. And I'm like, have you not followed my actual journey? <laughs> I go, I've only been doing this probably for the last six weeks, like actually making it all come together and like, you know, confidently coming down on purpose because I know I can paddle back up again. Like pretty much for nine months, I would be going out every session fully with zero confidence and anxiety through the roof if I would make it or not. Mm. But like, I've got, I've just got such a, a numb skull that I'm just like, I'm so stubborn. I've just always, like the amount of times I paddled from Maruba to Bondi, like a, what's that? Like a, I think a 9K paddle. And I'm not, I've never even sat before all of this. I'm, I couldn't even stand on the board and I'm doing this paddle, like without even getting on foil sometimes at all. Yeah. I just yeah. paddle the whole way. I remember People be calling the cops on me. I had the helicopter <laughs> <laughs> nonstop. People are like, this guy's insane. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> I remember, um, yeah, you uploaded those and went, it's probably a time for a couple of bay runs just to boost your confidence, Josh. Um, <laughs> but you, yeah, you're like, no, I'm ready for the ocean, ready for the ocean. I remember there was one video you uploaded and it was um, of you like kind of chipping in on a wave almost and then pumping, I guess it was that off, I don't know what beach it was off, but like then pumping sort of out and you sort of finish the run um, that way. And, and the take off on that wave was like, way harder than, than like <laughs> paddling into a bump you know once you yeah. know how to learn how to paddle into a bump yeah yeah but you were just i was like man this guy's determined <laughs> <laughs> oh yes i remember that that was um south bondi yeah 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 it yes, would have been yeah. way harder to paddle into that way than oh, to yeah. actually just paddle into a bump <laughs> yeah but yeah. um and that was probably after what i guess that's after eight k's of paddling stuff yes, not done for yes. and then yeah one little chip in for a yeah. 500 meter glide yeah, yeah. And I'd come come home and I'd be so sore to want to just like eat so many magnesium tablets and like I just like every muscle because I've never really done any like of like uh, my only exercise was surfing. Surfing is not an exercise when you do it for that long. So this mm. was all new to me. And even even today, like after the the session we had a um, uh, long reef to Avalon yesterday, like I'm sore. Like it's, this is still new to me. Like my muscles are still, does it's not like, um, yeah, second nature to yeah. me yet. Yeah. So, I guess it's a good point. Like surfing is, you said, you said it the other day and we're driving, like surfing is a lot of sitting and waiting. And like, mm. you, I think you said, this is the, I think you said it's the fittest I've ever been. hundred percent. Been doing something for like a long time. So like yeah. paddling surf and then, then the foiling of part of the, the surf and then, you know, and then reading all the bumps and just standing on your feet and pumping for an hour like we did for Manly to Palmer the other day and, you know, half an hour yesterday. Um, actually, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. So in terms of like training, I guess something I haven't done, but like, I guess being in the ocean is a pretty cool way to train, I reckon, you know, yep. so in terms of like a fitness thing, that's how I got into this basically. I, I um, you know, you just being out in the ocean and that being your gym is like the best, I reckon, because you're in the elements. So, like, how do you find, um, like, did you enjoy it? Like you did, like you do surfing before or is it, what, what's different? I think like you nailed it. Like I, I've, I've never gone to a gym and I look at this and even if it's all failed runs is that you just get an exercise. Don't beat yourself up if you're not getting on foil or achieving what you set out to do that day. But if you're just getting in the water and paddling, that's already learning another skill. Or while you're out there, you learned that like, um, you know, how to paddle straighter. Like you, you're always learning something. So I, I think that for me, yeah, I learned that through spearfishing actually because spearfishing is very, it's not very productive. Like nothing usually ever really happens with it, but you just get out there and you just get content with just being in the water. Mm. So um, yeah, is don't don't beat yourself up about it. Like it's it, it will come in time. I think people just want that instant gratification. And I think if anything it's 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 been made worse by like this whole like barracuda sensation people think that they can just i'm not dissing the barracuda or anything but like i'm just saying um they, they want to buy something and then just be able to do it like that yeah yeah and like i just i don't think like there's you, like even if you're an amazing prone foiler like you need to go through the steps of learning this because like perfect example is like Jeremy, Jeremy's like one of the best foilers in the world, Jeremy Wilmot. Mm. And he's on this downwind uh, uh, adventure at the moment. And his technique still sucks. 
and I'll 100% say that because I went with him the other day. He's like a terrible paddler. But, you know, once, once he's on foil, he should be good, but he's still making mistakes. Mm. And that's because purely because he's not used to the equipment. He's still out of his element, even though, like, you know, foiling is his domain. But you just got to put in serious amounts of time. And, and like, like, you, like you did, sacrifice a couple months of prone sessions and just yeah. be riding your sup in the surf. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it really, one of my mates, Joe, Karen, who we did the run with the other day, he, he was a prone foiler. And then he's like, I want to learn a downwind. And I was like, dude, you just got to get a sup and just, and he sucked on it. He's like, okay, I'm just going to, and he sucks so bad. He's like, I'm just going to never run, touch my prone again. And and now he's doing a trip around Australia and he's only bringing his sup foil board. Like that's, Sick. he's just like, Sick. I can wing it. If it's small, I can prone it. And like, even then I'll probably just sup it anyway because you get more waves on a sup and you can ride totally. smaller conditions. Um, yeah. Like unbroken waves are now super fun on a mm. sup. So it's like, it, the, there's a lot of benefits, I guess, to riding a bigger board. And until you get used to that bigger board, they seem like negatives. Yeah. It's just that early sacrifice, I reckon. Like, I think you need to just like, um, I'm so glad that I didn't do this in the other way, the winging first and then the sup downwind, because I feel like if you can wing, whenever it's wind, you're like, oh, I can do this. So then I don't want to miss winging by failing at sup. I just went from zero wind sports into sup wanting to downwind and just sucked at that for a year. And then finally it's come good. So... Yeah, and then now the wingings come to me so easy. Yeah, because like I know I balance. know how to ride a big board, big wing. The only thing I'm learning is just how to hold the thing. So, mm. um, yeah, I'm so glad I did it in that process because I've seen so many people not they're like dipping their toe in but not fully committing. Yeah. They're just like, oh, but I can go winging today, and it's just like mm, mm. you're not going to get any better if you got that attitude. You yeah. got to fully immerse yourself. You got to go head first, dive in. Yeah. Let's um let's talk about the boards. So we talked about your foils. So you started like the bigger axis wings, and then now you're on the unifoil team and and ripping on all their range now. So but what um yeah what, what boards? So you started on that um six one twenty eight Brad's old board. Yeah, and that was a Sonova. Um, that was like perfect, and I, I sold that on to another guy who wanted to get into um the sub downwind. Um, from there I got um well I I borrowed so many of your book I think I borrowed like a smaller version of the one I was writing it was like I think 510 by yeah, 526, 26 yeah. because it was narrow but it was way too little volume for me but I was just testing what was achievable um don't recommend low volume boards for for beginners it's just Definitely gonna suck yeah. um from there I then got a Kalama um Unfortunately, that took forever because of the whole COVID thing and um, shipping. But once that came, that was amazing. Um, that was the E3, the 6.1 by, I think, 23 and 105 litres. And that, um, yeah, that was a game changer because that was the most narrow thing I've ever ridden. And um, I think by then my skill set was probably intermediate um so i was still like you know when i got out to the wind line i'd stand up and fall off um still at that stage but at least when i would paddle um the board felt like it was gaining a little bit of momentum yeah and then um literally uh probably a month after riding the kalama sam from wss goes we're getting a shipment of these new casey sonova elite uh range do you want me to put your name on one? And like, I just bought one of these Kalamas for 2300 and I was like, oh, fuck. But then I was like, so tunnel vision. I was like, oh, the amount of times I've been on a run and I'd be like, I would pay anything right now to be on foil because yeah. I'd just be paddling down the coast. So then I was like, oh, I, uh, I think I did a cashy or something and had a bit of spare cash. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to put down on, because the dimensions just sounded better. It sounded a little bit longer. It was 6'6", six, six, this new Sonova Elite by i think 21 no it's nearly 22 but it's like yeah. 21 and more than three, three quarters, quarters or something yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, eights, by, yeah by um by 100 liters which i've found by them because i've used so many boards i found 100 liters was kind of my magic number um so it just sounded perfect so then i dropped money on it all the other 
boys in, in our WhatsApp group pretty much got the same board too. And um, from the get go, it was just like, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and I've had, I, ha I still have that board to this day. Um, yeah, Marcus did it, a good job on those ones, those elites. We, um, it was interesting to see like everything explode and, and we hadn't tested something super long and skinny yet. So those elites were like, to us, they were that middle ground, you know, they're not eight foot by, or well, they're not five by 30, like the Farracudas, you know, mm -hmm. eight foot by 20, whatever they are. Um, but that was something that, that we had tested and we'd been using for a long time, but just more pulled in and I guess taking a bit of inspiration from the Barracudas, but not making it extreme. And I think Dave Kalama is a, he's a genius, like mad, like he's just so into it. But if you look at what he's done, he's done like, you know, a square board like this. And then he's done a skinny board like this. You know, he's gone extreme. He's, he never, he, he doesn't do things in halves. <laughs> Dave, mm -hmm. and, and that's how you learn something. And he's learned a lot and he's showed everyone what's possible. But I think there is a middle ground that you can kind of reach and still get benefit. And I, the elite, I think, what, what Marks and I came up with and a lot of two and fourth and we were actually using the pros when we came out of that range. We're like, well, the pro was what we had been using for so long. And then the elite came and we're like, oh, well, we've got to follow the trend. In some respect, and we tested one that was a little bit narrow and we found benefit. We're like, well, we'll add a bit of length, add a bit of volume and see how it works. And as soon as we got them, we're like, oh, got to release them. We're stoked on them. And it's stoked to see a lot of people have enjoyed the elite. Success. Yeah. No, and the, um, I think the first thing I said after I rode your board was um, how the hell are they so stable? Like this is mm. the most narrow board I've ridden, um, a fraction narrower than the Kalama, but it was like rock solid. And I think from from whatever you guys have done, your know, Mark's done with the design, the stability that you get that then transfers into the power that you can put into the paddle is huge. Mm. And like after after experiencing that it's really given me confidence to nearly, you know, test the waters with going narrower, maybe a touch longer, but not, I don't want, I don't want to get to that mega long size because um, I feel like it's just like with surfing, like when you're beginning, you're on a mow and then like, you know, now, we're, now we're riding like six twos, like whatever, like, you know, short board performance things because your skill level gets better because you're better exactly. at paddling. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, it's interesting because yeah, I was I was lucky enough to ride Zane Sultan uh, yesterday seven two by nineteen. Mm. Like to me, that blew my mind how how narrow that was. But then mm. as soon as I stood on it, I was like, wow, this thing's this thing's stable. Yeah. And I think you explained it to me is like like yeah, when you start getting longer in the other way, that creates stability as well. So um, I just think like don't be afraid to go narrow i see a lot of guys being like oh but like i've never got sub skills before but if anything just try and borrow as many boards off mates or whatever just yeah, to demo. get a feel <laughs> because yeah demo because it's so hard to judge something until you've really tried it so and i think that's why i've been very fortunate enough where i've been able to test a lot of gear and um yeah i'm psyched like i i've, I've signed with amos this year super stoked and um we're gonna make one of these sultans i think sent through some dimensions the other night and um i'm gonna probably go down the same one that zane lent me the other day i think seven two by 19 by 100 liters and then i also wanted to play around with zane's model the phantom but i'm gonna stretch it out and make it six nine by i think 20 yeah so um yeah it's just like i found what was really nice is like with that six six and over elite um it really gave me a good gauge on um like what a board should feel like when you stand on it you paddle and you actually move forward you're not sinking you're not mm. wobbling everywhere and then it's just yeah i yeah feel very fortunate now that i can oh, use you've... that knowledge from that and and then now play with what amos is uh, has made up with his, his board design. So it's super exciting. Yeah, I think you, you've probably tested more boards than anyone, mate. Like it's, it's um, <laughs> like, and jump ship so many times, which is oh, great. But, it's like, oh, it's, it's good. the yeah. best. Like trying everything is, is how you understand what works and what doesn't yeah. for you. And mm. like, like you mentioned the balance and those boards, the, the cases, the Sonova cases, and 
Marcus, that was one thing Marcus and I noticed. A lot of people, when they're learning, they just go too small aboard. Even these barracudas or, you know, barracuda ripoffs, um, they're so narrow and they think, oh, you know, because they're long, it's super stable. But if it's like when they get narrow and sort of lower in volume, you go out in the ocean and especially in Sydney, like we don't have the nicest ocean conditions. It's pretty rough. Like lots of, mm. lots of backwash, lots of, lots of water moving and, and someone on a barracuda style board, if they have never sat before, they will struggle. <laughs> mm. Like guarantee, like flat water foiling is one thing, like paddling up in the flat a barracuda is going to be epic, you know, guaranteed. It's the best board. It's longer, it's skinnier, more speed, um, easier, to, easier to balance where you go. But you get out in the ocean and, there's, and there's, if there's chop that's coming every which direction, the, the longer, and not so much longer, but the skinnier boards, it's going to be hard. And stability was one of the things that Marcus and I didn't want to sacrifice on. Like we need stability. And that's why like there's the pro and the elite Mm-hmm. and we've come out with a new one now that we tried a few longer ones we call it the prone because it's like not necessarily for up like it's best for prone because it's so narrow mm-hmm. but but um basically over in wa there's a bunch there's a few demo boards at stand up surf shop and um there's guys using it all the time the downwind foiling center there's popping off and um there's guys on the pro boards like six nine by oh, i don't know the width they're 26 ish and, and they, they can't stand on the boards because they're too narrow. They're too tippy. So um, they need to either go longer if they want to stay the same width or they need to go higher volume or they need to go wider. And you've got to use a combination of all three of those things to get yourself to the level. And it's so hard because width is such a tax. You go wide and it's to get no speed. You go long and it it's a bit of a tax on your pumping and your ability to maneuver it. Not as much mm-hmm. as you'd think, but it's, you know, there's, there's a tax. People aren't going to be on eight foot by 20 wide barracudas forever. I feel like they're going to be progressing down to, to shorter and maybe skinnier barracudas, um, pumping as much volume into them, but keeping them really, you know, um, thin or narrow, I guess. But yeah, it's going to be really interesting in the next couple of months because I guess, Josh, in the last year, it's probably been like the biggest progression of downwind foiling, like you're definitely the biggest progression of downwind foil evolution in the last year and a year ago six oh six one by 28 was actually a, <laughs> yeah. was a longer that was a longer like sort of skinnier board but totally. most but most boards you know there was five tens by 30 it was more they're almost like a cross between like you know dave kalama's like remember he had the barn door mm-hmm. just full square yeah and now he's and now he's got the you know the barracuda which is so long and skinny and a lot of people were downwinding on those like square boards when when it all started it, because that's what everyone was using because it was better in the surf totally yeah. and now they're long and skinny and it's yeah <laughs> full evolution full yeah and it's cool to see like i guess you, you've you've probably tried you know everything but the bar it's so hard to get it get your hands on the barracuda here in australia but um i'm, I'm looking forward to them coming out and just sort of yeah think- i'm keen to see the crew here mm. um try them out because like like what you said it'll be interesting to see how they go like i reckon like in the bay it'd be awesome but like to see him out in the ocean i reckon that'd be it'd be cool i just like i'm i'm down to see like all oh, these I... different designs and stuff and yeah yeah i hope it gets more reckon... people getting out there the better we exactly. need more lifts yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the recognition it deserves like dave yes. Palmer's, he's, yeah. he's really it, it i see the back hitter is a great beginner downwind foil board as long mm-hmm. as you're not going too narrow that you can't stand on it in messy stuff. Um, so cool. It, I'm mm. pumped to see the progression. So, so Josh, what's what's next? Like, what's the next, I guess, box you want to tick off in terms of the downwind falling? Because you've had, you, you've pretty much covered a lot of it. Like, the last six weeks, you've... So, for me, code. So me, for me um, my goal at the start of the year was to... Um, ace a run my local run from Maroubra to Bondi and I think I did that maybe two months ago and I was so psyched and I texted you straight away because I was like I think I think you said once you ace a run then you can do the coach I mean you can do the the Casey podcast podcast. and I was just like (laughs) I did it I did it I did it but I've been trying to do a podcast ever since (laughs) but um for me um that box has been ticked now, which has been really nice because now I've got the confidence 
where I'm happy to come down. Like I've actually done it the last few runs with Perth, with Jeremy, like um, we even did it the other day, uh, mm. yesterday, where we would come down purposely to all reconnect, something like the WA boys do really well yeah. and girls. And um, I love that because like it can get lonely out there. Like if you just like, and it's nice too to do your own thing out the ocean, but yeah. like when you can be like, oh, you know what, this headland, let's all come down and then we'll all paddle back up again, which would be cool. Like say with, when the Barracuda comes and everyone's got that confidence because like you can paddle up anything. Yeah. Um, but for me, uh, and we've already been chatting, like our little group is is big distances. Like obviously not compared to your big distance that you did at the start of the year, but like um, we're talking, and for me, I've done 30Ks now a few times. Yeah. Um, I'm tired after it, but like it doesn't say that I couldn't keep doing another uh, 30Ks. Um, I reckon like I could do, I don't know what I could do, but I reckon like, two hours three hours so if you equate that into kilometers like it's getting 60, close to 60 80 70Ks, yeah. like yeah I, I i would love to do one of those trips i think the hardest thing that we're finding is just the logistics yeah. um we talked the other day uh like trying to might even see if there's like an airport shuttle bus that would take us to the central coast and you know we throw our boards in their trailer or we hit up one of our friends, Toddy, and he said he'll he'll drive us up there for two hundred bucks. We'll throw on fifty bucks each, like, um, just little things like that. Like I, I, for me, downwind, like what I said before, is I love uh, knowing that your skill set can get you from point A to point B. But um, I also love the adventure, like it's just mm. like the unknown because, like, like you know, conditions can change like that, and it's like. But if the conditions change, say the, the wind drops out, can we still ride those bumps or just those swells to where we need to go? And it's just exciting. I love it. Mm. Like I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not adrenaline junkie, but like I just, for me, that's like the, the only time where I'm truly present because you're just so focused on what you're doing. And like, um, yeah, I just, I love it. It's, it's hard to find those moments. And for me, like I can tap into them quite, like, quite, quite often now every time the wind's up. So mm. It's, it's, yeah. it's, I bet you look at the swell forecast less and more wind forecast. I don't even now. I don't even look at the swell forecast anymore. I miss swells yeah. all the time now because all <laughs> I'm looking at is that wind chart. As soon yeah. as I see it jump up, I'm like, oh yeah, we're on. We're on. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, I'm the same. I don't I don't miss the swells either. Like the downwind is a if you can ride a wave for an hour, it's like it's pretty fun. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, no totally. crowds. No, no and then and and... another another little goal too that um I had which kind of already uh tick that box but was i i really wanted to um uh be downwinding when it's like 10 to 12 knots because we get that really often Mm. here in like the on the east coast like nearly every afternoon you get a a 10 to 12 knot coming from either direction so Mm. my goal was to tap into that and um we've been lucky like i honestly feels like we've been downwinding every second day it's been amazing yeah like it might not be any good to hawaii standards or west Oz standards but like we're still downwinding cool yeah, yeah. Like, so it's so good mm. um let's get like i want to talk distance stuff because the i like i love that stuff too like there's something about traveling a long distance boiling and, and unfortunately around sydney that the roads are kind of congested and um Terrible. to go to go long distances it's like Manly to Palmy is a 25, 26 Ks. I think I got the other day. Um, 30 if you take my line. Yeah, 30 if you go <laughs> halfway to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I've done um, Little Bay to, to Palmy, and that's 50. I, th- I want to do that one. I was yeah. keen to do that. Yeah, That'd be a good one. We'll do that one day for sure. But I, I think um, going up to the Central Coast would, would give us that distance pretty easily, like finishing at Copa like, or starting mm-hmm. at Copa and like Northeast. Yeah, and, and I think the beauty, beautiful thing about Sydney on the east coast, I guess, is we get northeasterlies and southerlies. So, um, one of the things I think you should consider is, you know, you get like the southerly busters. I guess more towards the end of summer, you get like northeasterlies blowing, and then a big southerly bus will come through. And sometimes they come through in the afternoon, like sort of two, three o'clock. If a nor'easter was up enough, you could you could actually start like at Long Reef. And go back to the eastern suburbs, and then when the southerly buster comes, like just go back to your car. And I reckon oh, that'd that'd be sick. Like that. Have you done that? 
never. I've tried to do it once. Even on my stand up, I've tried to do it. Like before I was foiling, I'd I'd paddle from mine to manly and, and it just always like it's not hard to forecast like the, the, the that timing on the change and obviously when the wind changes the longer you leave it the better the conditions mm. get because you, because you got the bump but I, I i lined it up once really well on my on my unlimited stand up and i caught a little wave off bower and i creased my board oh, <laughs> so no. the wind had changed and i i had to get i guess she called lana and got me to pick me up because i was no. it was so that's fun. an awesome um that's an awesome goal yeah, and like I feel like I don't know, maybe it has something to do with um, La Nina, but like I feel like we haven't seen any of those crazy fronts this summer, where it's like a blistering hot forty degree day, and then bang, a huge southerly comes, and it's mm. like you know just fully changes. Yeah, I feel like there hasn't been many in the last three or four years for sure. Yeah, but that come, that'd be a really cool it. one. I'd be I'd be super down for that. I think Perth did one the other day, but it was miniature. It was like. 2Ks and then the wind changed and he came back, but he did yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's, he told me I was yeah. so jealous. I'm like, yeah, mm. like, so I'm trying to do that. But <laughs> the other thing is just like in a northeasterly driving up to Copa in one, one, someone, one, someone's car and then downwinding home. And then if it goes suddenly overnight, then you can just go back and get your car the next day. And I think on yeah. the weekend, like, yeah, we could all do that. That's another one that, another easiest. one that I've, Another one that I thought of, which would be like super adventure style, would be to um, like say if you had like what we had recently, like three days of like pretty strong southerlies and just going one way. Mm. And like I've got friends Central Coast, I've got a friend in Seal Rocks, I've got a friend up at Valor Beach. And then got friends up at Byron, and then even go to Goldie. I've got mates in Goldie too, mm. and then just like you got, you're all in on that because like I reckon you could like you obviously got your life jacket, you got your board shorts. Hopefully, wherever you're staying each night, they're going to house you and you know give you a pair Close of jeans you. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I reckon how that would be like really yeah. cool. The only problem with that would be, um, and like I said the other day with you was. I don't know the coastline from the ocean looking in. Like for me, that would be tricky. Like, yeah, you know, I, I go to Northern Beach all the time, but I didn't know what headland um, Avalon was or what Palm yeah, Beach yeah. looked like. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I'm always looking from the beach outwards, and yeah. it all kind of looks the same when you're out there. So for unless sure. you're like super close to the shore, which you're not usually. Nah, you, but you, um, one of the, like I've done it. Like obviously I've done a few longer ones, but just having like. When, once you get used to having your phone in your hand while you're downwinding, you, I've actually gone on Google Maps and you literally just look where you are. You're like, okay, I've gone past Copa. I'm just off Terrigal, you know, and you sort of know just based on that. And there you can kind of pinpoint, like obviously a bit of planning before, you know, like, okay, if I, there's this headland that juts out further than the others, that's when I know I'm, but also with your watch. So distance, yeah. kilometers, you sort of, know, okay, if I've traveled 50 Ks and I must be off X, and if I've yeah. traveled 100 k's, and I should be near Y, and then you kind of right. know that it's and going off, you know. Also, actually, what about Hawaii? So, like, all, this is all East Coast stuff. Do you want to go to Hawaii and do some of those downwind races? I'd really? love to. Or like, I guess if, if I guess, oh yeah, that's I wanted to go last year, but um, no, all those things are on my on my hit list. I want to go to Hood River? I'd love to go. To, I went to Hawaii last year, but unfortunately, we didn't get any downwind conditions with the Voyager boys um but like i'd love to tick off all them because like i was lucky enough when i was in california i did a little um downwinder on the prone and like just to feel different oceans and their bumps and comparing conditions i i find that yeah i find that super interesting because like i feel like here in sydney we got pretty not ideal conditions but consistent but then like i was recently just over in perth and linked up with marcus and stuff and I was blown away by how good it was. Like, I reckon if anyone's listening to this and they want to get into downwind, go to Perth for a week mm. when the doctor's blown and get your gear there somehow and you will get it after a week of being there because it's like a bay run on steroids. Yeah. And it just blows Seriously. every day. And you can do multiple runs in one day because there's always crews going back and forth. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's just like, if you can get conditions like that, it's enough to boost your confidence to then take on 
harder conditions. I think we were just dealt the hard card here in Sydney, but like yeah. I think it's it's made us who we are. So I'm stoked, and I, I would love to experience you know all those runs that all those crews are doing over in um like in Maui and stuff. Just to it just looks amazing how they say we don't go out unless it's like you know 30 knots and like i couldn't yeah. even fathom that like, i don't even think i've been out in conditions in 30 knots no, before. I wouldn't saying, even know. Like, yeah, yeah i thought i thought our run on saturday was thought uh, yeah saturday was 30 knots feels like gust into 25 i'm like oh that was pretty much 30 <laughs> knots <laughs> whatever yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah so, i just don't get it that often um, i got um yeah i got a big hit list of what i want to do and it's cool now to like kind of have that confidence behind you to know that you can rock up to spots and meet the local crews there and you know that you're not going to be a burden to them because like, I think that's the, that's the hardest thing. You don't want to rock up and be like, Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it or like, I don't mm. want to hold you guys up. But yeah, once you build that confidence up, it's, it's, it's endless, I guess. It's, it's cool. Uh, so good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's just let's quickly, let's talk about Perth conditions. Um, I think the biggest thing with Perth conditions is obviously it's super peaky like super it's shorter period and it, i feel like you can use almost any foil and it's going to work um but i think the main thing over in perth about like if you're going to go to want to learn the downwind go to perth is the consistency like mm. you kind of have like in a seven day week you're going to have five windy days like it's almost it's almost a sure thing it feels like or maybe we got lucky when we were over there but it's just like and every day is the same and that's the thing it's we, exact same what we miss here in sydney is that one day you'll have a northeasterly mm. with no swell. The next day you have a southerly with a six six foot swell. Mm. The day after you'll have a westerly and the ocean's flat. The day mm. after that you've got an easterly, and it's just like every day is different. And even if there's a perfect wind, you probably got swell going the wrong direction, and so makes it makes you ready for anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I definitely back that. And like, not that I've downwinded in heaps of spots now, but I've definitely downwinded a, a bit around the place. And um, yeah, I think also like what is really nice about West Dawes is that you paddle, you can paddle 50 meters off the beach and that's where you start. Mm. You're not paddling like 200 meters past the headland to get out to the wind line. Like it's, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's everything's nice about it and it's sunny and it's just like, yeah. And there's good crew there and there's always a car going back and forth. Yeah. The highway's right behind the beach. Like what more yeah. can you ask for? Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good zone. Definitely. Mm. get over there and go hassle marcus at the stand-ups yeah. on the, fo the foil shot <laughs> for sure <laughs> he loves for it sure. yeah um all anything else you want to sort of leave I'll us with josh check check my phone i i say i just had something that um uh well i guess yeah i usually try to work in some sort of drills or technique pointers i guess for maybe for downsizing or or bay runs to ocean runs what was your trick it sounds like you just went out regardless. <laughs> um, like, I don't think there was any tricks. I think there was just like, it was just consistency. Yeah. And like, and, and don't be afraid to try, try different gear because it might just open up a whole new, whole new dimension to you. Um, mm. It's very easy to get fixed on what other people are doing because you're not confident and you're anxious. So you want to not make your own mistakes. So you're trying to listen to someone else. But everyone is so different foiling. That's the one thing, like a lot of people hit me up, oh, how would you shim this with that? And I'm just like, it's so personal preference mm. that whatever I tell you is going to probably be wrong. So you're better yeah. off just like get your shim bag, get your tails, play with it all. And you got to figure it out yourself because mm. yeah, like there can be a general consensus, but like um, you need to, you need to figure it out for yourself. And I feel like if you're consistently doing that, trying to get out there every second day, even if even if it's not windy and like with your courses, like doing the the paddle up in the in the flat, like um, I, it's just getting time on the board because this board is foreign if you've got no sub skills, and also the paddle is foreign. Everything's mm. foreign. So as yeah. long, well, even the foil too, because you're using a bigger foil than you probably are if you're yeah. going to be in the surf or you know Definitely. even winging. You're using everything's different and yeah perfect great advice that the, the more time you can get on the equipment that you want to be downwinding the, the more better. familiar the more familiar yeah. it's going to be when the conditions are on yeah or even if you you're breaking that rule of um of putting the prone board away for a while at least put that big foil on your prone board and mm. get the feel of how it feels even if it is in waves and stuff but like pumping out the back um i think another thing that i want to 
leave um, your audience is don't get stuck on this flat water paddle up. Mm. I feel like everyone wants to achieve that before they do anything downwind. And to be honest, I only just got my first flat water paddle up in Marimbula. And I was trying for a long time, but I was downwinding eight months before that. Mm. Um, I think the hardest thing, and you probably back me on this, is yeah, it's it's a great skill knowing that you can paddle up in no wind. Mm. But the biggest skill that you can learn is the timing of the paddle up in the bumps. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't Definitely. have that and you're paddling into the back of another bump, it's, it's game over. Or yeah. if, you're, if your legs aren't used to standing in a wobbly ocean, you've got no stability, so you've got no power in your paddle. Exactly. So all those failed paddles that I've done for 10 kilometers is just building up your quads and your stability standing on that board and and just yeah you'll you'll get it like you just gotta you just gotta put in the time and like yeah if you people getting into it now are 10 times more luckier than when I got into it because mm. literally the gear is better yeah but you still you yeah there's no shortcuts the there's gear no doesn't... shortcuts yeah and there's no shortcuts and like um I think another really good tip that I found with your course was if you can somehow get a mate to film you when you're out there mm. doing a paddle up, or if you're lucky enough and you got a mate on a jet ski helping you, um, get him to film you because what you're doing, I mean, what you think you're doing compared to what you're actually doing. <laughs> I, 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 I want to just slag, um, Jeremy one more time because his <laughs> technique is terrible and yeah. he might be thinking that he's Dave Kalama there just paddling in but he's yeah. doing the worst thing and he's like I don't know why I'm not getting it and I'm like man I can tell you easily <laughs> <laughs> so get get your mates to film you with the, everyone's got a bloody GoPro these days get your yeah. mates to film you even, even with an you iPhone from the beach like it's so much better than nothing yeah. like just something it doesn't have to be totally. cinema production just like it, it makes not only yourself understand what you look like and what you can improve upon, but oh, it's just you will know straight away yeah. when you see like everyone that first time filming themselves trying to do a paddle up. They're like, "That's not me." Yeah, yeah. That's, I look way. I'm, I'm way closer than that. So like, no, nah, mate, you're not mm. even moving forwards. You're going around in circles, and that's about totally. it. Totally. Yeah. And another another rabbit hole that you can get trapped in is don't go overboard on the whole shimming thing because you're thinking that you're going to get lift off. You're just stalling out. Um, yeah, it's a balance I mean, I, of drag. Exactly. I went, I went down that rabbit hole thinking like, oh, if I just put more shims in and created more lift, I'm going to get into the air quicker. And then you wasted probably another month doing that, <laughs> failing. So just, yeah, you just, yeah. Uh, awesome, Josh. I think there's mm. lots of nuggets of wisdom. Thanks to yeah. your failures, and and I think yeah, yeah. Your, your probably best tip is don't even listen, just go out and do it. Because... Yeah, don't, and don't be scared to fail because like mm. that's the only way you're going to get better. Yeah, you learn nothing from a successful run, honestly. No way. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. but it's like, eh, what's mm. next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's been a pleasure, mate, helping you and watching you progress and the tenacity and. Like you said, you weren't a fast runner. <laughs> you, no you, way. This definitely took... didn't come naturally to me, especially yeah. after hearing Perth podcast last week, how he just got it in like two runs. Oh, and I, I was like... Honestly, couldn't believe that, eh? <laughs> freak. And, and, and I was comparing myself to him. That's what beat me up so much because like he was... he was not, I was... His, well, I still am his wingman, but from the get-go, it was him going on bay runs with me. And he'd be like, yeah, you'll only be in the bay for like one more month and then we'll be good. And that was like... Yeah, that was... 10 months ago yeah. <laughs> yeah took me a lot longer than one month to get out and sell out of the day but yeah yeah don't yeah. be don't be fooled by what you see on instagram there's a lot of pain that goes into oh, everything right. that's going on actually i used to always give you a bit of a hard time because josh would always upload stuff on the coach casey club facebook page and he was like killing it like filming himself <laughs> and like this and that and i'm like send us your stack <laughs> <laughs> and it was like you know he was doing like, you know, yeah. seven, seven minute Ks and like, you know, dropping off, but he had like 30 seconds here and 30 Smoke seconds. Smoke and mirrors, mate. Smoke yeah. and mirrors. I know, like, to, I, know to, I know to angle the GoPro on the right yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Josh is the, the media man. And and that's that's a skill in itself, but there's he's got it now. It's sick. And and actually yeah. that run that you, the run we did the other day on the slower fours, we're just sort of surfing next to each other at that um 
all on one bump. It was that was the yeah. sickest clip. Yeah, pretty cool. Huh? Like, <laughs> so so cool. Like all of us, like literally in one screen next to yeah. each other, and I nearly ran into you like twice on that. I know. I too. didn't realize I was. We were like literally nearly touching it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the first time we nearly run into each other. <laughs> <laughs> not, I don't think it'll be the last either. <laughs> uh, but, classic. Uh, Thanks, thanks Jimmy. for coming on, Josh. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, and I'm, I'm looking forward to a few more down and runs and adventures with you. So, cool. Yeah. Cheers. Sounds good. See you, mate.